G'day, welcome to the Boomerang Channel. This is Paramount Country. I'm gonna do a little bit of an experiment which really helps with boomerang design. I'm gonna take my number one model, the Little Ripper, and I'm gonna show you how a, um, a finished one flies. And then I'm gonna go through a number of uh, boomerangs uh, that, that I've just made up um, roughly from their first shaping. But what I've done is I have um, left out a surface here and there um, I've, I've either taken um, less off the uh, trailing edge of the dingle arm less off the leading edge more, a more blunt leading edge of the dingle arm um, it, um, and uh, the same thing with the lift arm and so forth some have got undercutting on one arm some on both arms some have got no undercutting uh, right down to one that's just a I think just a bare uh, yeah, something with no surfaces. All right, so I've, I've given them each a letter A through to K, and uh, and I would just see how the the difference in flight um, happen between the um, the finished little ripper. Okay, so the little ripper, the one I'm going to throw first, has got has got varnish on it, and then I'm going to throw an unvarnished. Uh, hasn't had its final sanding, but basically it's just the same um, and then uh, one with no undercut on the dingle arm one with no undercut on the lift arm uh, no undercut at all um, uh, one with a blunt elbow uh, section one with a blunt load, um, leading dingle arm a uh, leading leading arm one with a blunt leading edge on the lift arm uh, one with no trailing bevel um, on the dingle arm uh, one with no training bevel on the lift arm uh, less bevel on both the trailing and the uh, uh, on the tra trailing edge both trailing edges have less bevel on them and finally one with no surfaces at all and it'll be interesting to see how this one goes because uh, that should demonstrate how much of a boomerang's turn in flight is actually caused by gyroscopic uh, precession because it has no aerofoil shape to it whatsoever. So, Alright, I'll, uh, I'll put subtitles up and uh, so you can see what I'm doing with each one. Just the same, but with no finish on, no varnish on it. Okay, came around. But didn't, uh, not so slippery through the air, I suppose. No undercut on the dingle arm. Undercut on the lift arm. About the same with the other one. No undercut at all. Don't know if you saw that, that went a lot lower. Blunt elbow. It went up and down and up. Blunt leading dingle. Blunt leading edge on the dingle arm. Okay. 
make a full circuit. Landed wide to my left. Blunt leading lift arm. Again, it's working a bit harder to get through the air, so no trailing bevel on the dingle arm. trailing bevel on the lift arm. Less bevel on both the trailing and the lift arm. bit of wind I can just feel it coming across but this is um, no surfaces whatsoever to go I might repeat those Okay, so I'll just show you where they finished up. This is where I was throwing from, and that's a little ripper with a finish on it. All right, and my next closest one, about four and a half meters away. There's a few over there, but the one closest to the to its final trajectory of the finished one. This one here, and that has blunt leading lift arm. So it's blunter on there. All right, now I've got a whole bunch of them just two and a half meters to my right. And what do we have here? Um, less bevel on both the tra on both trailing edges. So you can see I've gone. Yeah, compared to a little ripper, yeah, there's less bevel, less bevel than there and there, and there and there. All right. And this one is no undercut on the dingle arm. And hello, dog. And what have we here? And that's uh, that's the same one with all the surfaces done, but it has no no varnish on it. Okay, and this one that actually hit it was no undercut on the lift arm. So this is the back side of the boomerang. So you can see this undercut on the dingle arm, no undercut on the lift arm, the long arm of this designer boomerang. Okay, now going further away from me. So that. Started to do a turn. Uh, I've got no trailing bevel, no trailing arm bevel on the dingle arm. So you can see, dingle arm has no trailing bevel like this one does. Okay. Two meters to this one, two meters further away from where I was throwing. Uh, no trailing bevel on the lift arm. The lift arm there, you see, there's no trailing bevel like there is on that. It's just a very slight edge. And then off to my left, left of where I was throwing. I have blunt leading dingle. So the leading edge of the dingle arm here, all right, is blunt compared to that one, okay. And the last two, oh, except for the one 
that only went halfway around that's got no undercut whatsoever so that didn't uh, create enough lift to come back around to where I was throwing it from and this one has a blunt elbow so there's no bevel on the elbow like there is on the little ripper's elbow see that that form pretty much the same so the elbow really doesn't have much to do with it and way over there between the Aussie Rules goal posts Aussie Rules by the way is the only sport so-called sport in the world where you actually get points for missing your goal you know, it's a point post or a behind post and that's the goal if you get it through the big sticks you get six points and if you get it through the little sticks you still get a consolation point yeah. kind of a national shame really and that's the one with no no surfaces at all that was just a blank um, off there but you can see uh, I was actually aiming to the left of that point post uh, to the far side of the point post from where we're standing um, and it sort of came around in a C shape but obviously generated no lift uh, because they didn't have any uh, aerofoil surfaces so there you go uh, hope you learned something from that about boomerang design it's an interesting exercise to go through just um, you know make up some boomerangs put some pencil on on them at the, what bits you leave out um, and then you yeah, and you can start to fine-tune whether you've got too much aerofoil happening uh, whether there's not enough undercut you need more undercut and then you can work out what it actually does in flight so that's that's how that's how I do my uh, my design of my boomerangs when I'm fine-tuning something um, so I make a bunch of them and uh, and uh, you, know, you always test your, your boomerangs before you put a finish on them anyway but uh, uh, it's an interesting little exercise to go through okay I'm going to be throwing them all again to the uh, towards that car that's kind of the, the roof of that car is my aiming point with about a uh, one o'clock layover and that should be around about my landing zone
Throw some boomerangs.